You are now listening to Next Legacy Radio. A radio station for the people. Again. Hey, 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 people. This is Charles. I am Brandon Madison of Next Legacy Radio. And I have finally, I feel like after years and years and years, and I feel like decades, <laughs> I feel like decades of of wanting to have dialogue with this young lady to uh, not just uh, give her her flowers and tell her that she's grown up in my household for so long, but to appreciate the talent that she has uh, and continue to have. And, you know, e- everything that I see when I go on social media, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always wanting to find ways to do something in terms of support and show something, but I'm here to give flowers to, and I'm actually going to verbatim read what she has on her Instagram. And you can actually hit her up and Melissa Archer is brought to you by Melissa Archer.com. And you can follow her on Instagram at underscore Melissa Archer. And she played when like to live days, TV and movies, training to be a ninja. I want to ask her about that and Cray make movies and break bones. I need to ask her about that too. Writer, tech lover, van life, all that good stuff. And I have the beautiful Melissa Archer on next legacy radio. Finally, Melissa, what's up? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate you taking time. Um, and I'm sure the listeners listening will be listening. Everything that comes with it will hear your voice, and it brings the nostalgia back. And, Melissa, I got to say, because, you know, you and I have never had dialogue out opposite of what, I, what I've always wanted to tell you and Erica and everybody that's been involved with One Life to Live that, you know, back in back in 2012, 2013, it's just like when that when that went off the air, it's like a part of you went off the air as well because we were actually growing up together, but you didn't know me until now. And <laughs> to see you portray an, a character and to see that character evolve takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of patience, and a lot of and a lot of yourself into that character. So I want to tell you first off, thank you for the years and years and years because. Now I, I got to go on YouTube or I got to find some way to go back and, re, you know, have these nice nostalgia moments, but also yeah. just the hard work that took, that it took, and I'm sure for you and the cast to be able to do what you've done for so many years. Uh, and, and I can't thank you enough for the memories that you've given me and still give me to this day. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for saying that. So I got to tell you, like, you know, does it still, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people have probably told you that, you know what, hey, you know, One Life to Live can still air today if they, if, 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 fill in the blanks or whatever, but do you <laughs> still feel that as well? Or, you know, is it so, I mean, and I know it's over a decade since it's been gone, but has it really gone? Do you still get those moments where people are coming to you with those questions? Um, Yeah, I've definitely, there's, Definitely been people who still think that it could be resurrected. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I I don't I don't see that happening. Um, but um, but there have there's there's still a few people. I think more more so I hear people talking about General Hospital um, and wondering if I'll go there. But but uh, occasionally the do you think it's gonna get resurrected? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think in general, like a lot of people, just really uh, will go back to the memories and the years, and that you know that that series and everything one like to live related was you know over forty years old, and you know with some gigantic actors and actresses who have portrayed you know larger than life characters, and I feel like your yeah. character is is one of them as well, and it's just you know when you look back on it as well, it's 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 a it's it's a nice feeling as well. Do you feel like it's it's still, you know, and, and you've mentioned it, but do you still feel like, you know, hey, my, my character still has some juice left. I still can get Natalie into whatever it is that's going down, but, you know. Oh, for it's, sure. It's, it's, do you think about it sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, she was a, a huge part of my life um, on a fairly daily basis <laughs> um, yeah. for over a decade. So it it's definitely... I think there was a lot of me and her and a lot of her and me. So, um, yeah. It, and I think, I think in some ways we kind of helped each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
grew up together literally like your portrayal of her and her of you or whatnot it's it's, uh-huh. it's awesome it's awesome it, but i have to ask you too the the day-to-day grind of not just daytime television but the hard work that comes into it i know a lot of people don't talk about it but i want to just it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work when you think back on it right like you know because some mm-hmm. it's, correct me if i'm wrong because i you know i'm not in your world i just hear things right but you know you have to be on call you you kind of have to just get in and get it done. Like, you know, there's a sense of urgency every single day that you step in and you got to not just know your lines, but, you know, you kind of have to go in deep with, you know, your character development, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what's interesting is, um, you know, as far as the, the time and, and stuff like that, that's that, that you have to spend on anything. Um, every actor was certainly different in, in how they approached it. I learned mm-hmm. early on that if I spent too much time trying to prepare for things that were coming up, like in the next, you know, few days even, um, because of the way soaps are written, um, yeah. I would sometimes in the middle of a scene just all of a sudden start doing like another scene from another day. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> because they they were similar, so the the cues would be similar. So I would, you know, mix them up, and so I I realized that I couldn't do that. Um, I couldn't study too too soon. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I was just going to get, you know, too many things mixed up in my brain. So um, best thing was to focus on one at a time. And the thing is, is like, you know, early, early on, or at least when I first started, uh, and it didn't last very long in, before they changed it, but, you know, in the, in, you would go there in the morning um, to do your dry rehearsal, which essentially was mm-hmm. in a room with chairs, pretending those were furniture and you know and the director just kind of telling you this is where you're going to be on the set you know and then then you would have typically well depending on what time you were up um because obviously uh if you were in the first scenes then you're you know everything goes a little bit faster but um you would go into the um you know, hair and makeup room, start that typically. Um, a lot of times we were doing our lines, you know, or learning our lines while sitting in the makeup chair and right. sometimes running lines, you know, with our, our scene partners. And then, you know, around 10 o'clock, uh, we would go up for camera blocking, which is essentially where we would go and show the cameras where we were going to be standing so that they would know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once everything was done with camera blocking, that was usually around lunch. So everybody takes their lunch and then come back and you start filming at one o'clock. Um, and um, that, I can't remember exactly when that stopped, but it stopped, I feel like, pretty early on when I first started. Wow. And it became like, yeah, you know what, we're just going to start taping rehearsal. And um, yeah. so, it, it, so, they, so they switched it up where it was like we did dry rehearsal at, you know, say 7 a.m. or something if you were up first. And then you were in hair and makeup, and then you were up on the floor at 10 in hair and makeup and uh and you start filming and wow. and then they just got rid of dress rehearsal <laughs> so <laughs> then it was just so then it was like we would kind of sometimes do a little bit of camera blocking and then we would just film and um and sometimes it would yeah and, and it was fine i mean but it's but because of that like you just had to get used to the pace and mm-hmm. you know it's a lot of a lot of times a lot of dialogue or at least in in my case there was a, a lot of pages typically and um you know and then if you and, and there were days where you could probably you might have had a more expositional uh day so there's not a lot of emotion to it it's just kind of more of the we're going to narrate essentially what's happening in the storyline <laughs> And then right, right. there were other days where, you know, you start off the scene bawling behind the door and your mom opens the door and you're just like, oh, you left me. Right. And so <laughs> right. <laughs> and those were the hardest, I think, because you're coming in fresh, like off the, you know, in the morning, coffee probably hasn't even like hit the brain well enough yet. And mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just hard to get focused. So there, there, those were probably the hardest scenes. Um, uh, and I will say, like, you know, having to go so deep sometimes, because in order to, like, make those, in order to cry, for me anyway, yeah. in order to cry, I have to believe it. So I have to go through this process that I think all actors do to 
to whatever extent each one does however they do it. Uh, but you believe it, right? Like you, you set yourself up, you're like, I am this person, you take on their personality, you take on their things, you recognize all the things that are around, and then you live that out. So if this bad thing happens, you know, then that bad thing will make you upset. Now, occasionally, there were some bad things that would happen that were like, I don't know, like, maybe I, like, Melissa might not cry about it, but Natalie would, (laughs) you know, and and that could be challenging, because you had to get past your own, you know, that's not what they want. They want, you know, they want the crying. They want the deep emotion. So um, a lot of times in order to, to go to that place, you know, you just have to kind of come in um, somewhat, um, I guess, focused is probably the best way to put it, but also not putting okay. like an immense amount of pressure on yourself uh, because I feel like when you do put on more pressure, then it just like dries up the well, you know, <laughs> Um, right, and right. Re- really the best way to be vulnerable is to be vulnerable. So if you go in and you're kind of already in that place, then, then it's kind of easy for, um, for that stuff to happen. And then sometimes the script is just like perfectly well written where it's just like, you don't even have to try because it, it's like the words you're saying and everything that it, it all just feels so real and so natural and so raw that you, 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 yeah you can't say it without crying, you know, like in, during rehearsal, you're like holding back to not cry. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and I think that's, you know, and there was something satisfying about it. Cause obviously, you know, it's therapeutic in a way for actors to be able to emote like that. Um, right. And, and get out um, things that sometimes we probably struggle with doing uh, in real life uh, in front of other people. But where it got challenging, like the most challenging, was on soaps, as you know, the storyline gets uh, stretched, right? So yes. let's just say it's like, I don't know, someone like my, I don't remember, I'm trying to remember, like, did my son get kidnapped? I can't remember. But some somebody, something bad happens, right? And, right. Uh, or, you know, actually, okay, let's, Christian, Christian got kidnapped, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and so he disappears, and so that it's very upsetting, and we don't know if he's dead or alive. And then I think at one point I got a finger, and you know, so it's very upsetting, right? But it right. continues on and on and on on a daily basis of just, right. the, you know, a, not just like I'm tearing up a little. It's like no, full on. I want to see you sobbing, right? Like, <laughs> right. like, right. like right. she <laughs> breaks down crying actively on like I don't know five days a week. And what's mm-hmm. challenging about that is in real life, when you are facing, you know, any kind of grief or something, you know, super emotional like that, we go in waves. So we have the like heavy, upset, you know, emotional cry, and then we might be numb for a day or two, and then we might be angry, and then we might be sad again, and then like nothing, like, you know, the, a, a feather drops and you're just crying again. Like, we go in waves. But because we're only capturing those scenes um, of of that character's life um, mm-hmm. that happen to have that big emotion, <laughs> it's like okay. I'm having to do that big emotion on a you know five days a week, and that can be more challenging because it's harder to I found anyway to to hit that same level of pain uh, that many days in a row um, without feeling like you were like faking it at time at times right. and um and I think that like I got lucky I think most of the time I, I mean I, I could probably count like how many times I ever actually faked it but but for <laughs> sure I think there were times <laughs> but yeah but it takes you to a certain place and I'm just remembering like you know the, the characters and remembering you know Natalie and John at the airport and they had a deep conversation and Mm-hmm. There are so many different things to settle when it comes to that. And I'm listening to you talk, and I'm thinking at the same time, like, if you have to be in that same emotion, like you mentioned, every day for, like, let's just say five days straight, you know, mm-hmm. that, I mean, not only, Melissa, that, that, that takes talent, uh, that takes also patience. Cause, and then your partner, you have to, like, whoever you're inter, inter, interacting with has to be on that same level as well. So that in itself is a task that, 
a lot of people don't talk about but should be celebrated and, and appreciated. So your your character, Melissa, has you know, was, was a part of a lot of good history for a lot of years. When did it get to that point when you were like, Oh, uh not only am I staying, oh, I'm I'm super heavy into not just the Buchanan family, but just the the ongoing thing that was one life to live. When did it hit you that, you know what, I'm I'm basically not just a mainstay, but I'm I'm a heavy part of the circle now. Um, I don't know. You know, I I think like it's a weird thing because of course there was like a point in time where I definitely felt um like I was, you know, like you know first and second contractor up. So you kind of feel like yeah, I'm here, right? Like I'm I'm obviously mm-hmm. gonna be a a lifer <laughs> or something like it, right? right. And right. um, but there was also you know, it's it sounds weird when I say this out loud, but um, because Natalie was always this character of feeling kind of like on the outside, I think me as Melissa also took that on, even if it wasn't really true, like no one was making me feel that way. But I think because Natalie felt that way, I think I personally, as a, as Melissa, struggled with, um, with, uh, with kind of, feeling like, like, oh, well, I haven't been here long enough or I haven't, you know what I mean? It was always like, you know, I, you know, I haven't put in all the dues yet or, you know, I didn't win an Emmy or (laughs) whatever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? So I think there were a lot of, like, Melissa put a lot of things on herself. (laughs) I love that I'm talking in third person. (laughs) But but also, you you know, Melissa, you know what though? Like I think even even then, like you know, storylines I feel like sometimes dictate you know who who people are gonna hate. You know what this person's up for a nomination or whatever the case may be. But oh, um, sure. a lot of people can pull a lot of you know just you know spot moments, not just with you and Erica, but you and Bree or you know what I mean. Like you can you can go back yeah. and pull so many different parts of what made Natalie her right there was an yeah, evolution yeah. to her because i remember coming on the scene i was like damn this person is badass but at the same time <laughs> had a soft spot too you know what i'm saying like it was it was such a mm-hmm. it was such an evolution to see her climb out of what she was going through in the beginning to see her full circle you know still mixed in with some drama we all know it's, it's you know it's a soap so it is what it is but, <laughs> yeah. but yeah but to see that evolution takes a lot of what we were talking about earlier, a lot of hard work, a lot of patience, a lot of stuff that I feel like, you know, you know, when it comes to the Emmys and certain awards, like, you know, it, it may not, it may not see, see that to fruition, like you mentioned, but I think your fans and people who are and have been and still following you to this day based on that character uh, speak volumes, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, there was a, a joke um, that, you know, winning an Emmy just meant that, like, you weren't going to have a job much longer because I think there was, like, yeah. several people yeah. who had won Emmys that, like, ended up going, like, leaving the show. So no it's really, <laughs> really funny. And, I mean, it was funny because I also, like, I learned. I mean, I didn't know anything about awards or whatever, you know, when I first started. And, um, <laughs> and I missed the first Emmys when we won ironically. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, you know, but after that, like, um, I didn't really know how you got nominated or not nominated, even though like I had to vote every year. And I finally started understanding yeah. that like there, are, there are themes, um, or shows, I should say, that are written, at least on a lot of other shows that were written specifically for certain actors so that they would have it an Emmy reel. Because with the Emmys, right. when you submit it can't be a compilation of work. It has to be one episode and it's the entire episode. So even if you're in one scene where you're an extra essentially in that, in that scene, or you have one line or something, but everything else is like this huge thing, that one scene where you don't speak, but somebody else does forever still has Mm -hmm. to be in there. And, and then that's going to like, whoever's going to watch it to vote. And, um, and we, our show very rarely had episodes that were, that were like specifically like every scene was like Emmy worthy watching. Right. Um, yeah. And, 
and that was, you know, what it was. But it, but, but definitely that I, I saw that's where I felt like One Life sometimes didn't have as many of those, you know, in the in the bank only because, you know, there there were shows that were like literally writing episodes just so that they would have an Emmy reel, and yeah, you know, it'd be kick ass. But but even yeah, so, and, it was fine. And, and sometimes it's just the nature of just what other people are looking at in terms of. I always feel like if you know, your 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 fans, the fans that you have and the supporters that you've had, not just you know through one life and you know days and you know, everything that you've done, like, you know, they, they stick around, like, you know, people like myself is because, you know, you mean, and that character has meant so much to, you know, uh, their daily life, not just to talk about what went on, but just to, you know, a lot of people miss the point of, you know, what, damn, Melissa acted her ass off and did great at such and such and such or whatever episode or whatever that comes through. And, that's always been part of a conversation. Like, you know, I can tell you, you know, I got, I got, uh, you know, hooked on one life to live. Like I remember I was a kid in the eighties and, you know, it was like one TV in the household. So I got, you know, I got, I got grabbed and said that e- Eterna storyline right back in the day. Right. And I was like, right. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I need to know these people and what's going on and who's who and what's yeah. what. So that's that's when I got married to the show, and you know, I've, ever since then, I've always been a supporter. And I think a lot of people can remember, you know, you and when you came into the scene, and you know, and how disruptive that character was. And again, like I mentioned, the evolution of her character mm-hmm. and the forty and everything else, and you know, again, stuff like that should be celebrated. You know, as we have Melissa Archer on Next Legacy Radio. She's brought to you by MelissaArcher.com. Um, any, uh, as, you know, and, and you've, you've, you know, been in the same arena and has done a wonderful job acting with Erica Slezak. And, again, I mentioned Bree. Um, mm-hmm. any, anything stood out to you over the years in terms of, like, you know, who your partners were at the time? It, was it, you know, funny moments or, you know, different moments that you'll never, ever, ever forget? I know you probably have millions of them, but can you pick, maybe one or two that, you know, would stand out as far as how, uh, you know, your your days of, of, of acting with the said person just either made you laugh out loud or, you know, whatever. I am the worst at, for whatever reason, remembering those funnier moments. Uh, but I do remember a day where I was working with, um, oh, let me see if I can remember first uh, real names. Um, there was... Larry, uh, it was Dr. Oh, Larry, okay. uh, Mike... Wallach. Wallach. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was yes. Michael Storm, right? Is that right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It was Michael Storm. It was, um, uh, see, now I'm, I, all I think of his character names now. I'm just like, what is happening? Ben, um, uh, Mark <laughs> Derwin, and Erica, of course. And I can't hmm. remember, but I feel like Phil was there as well, Asa, Phil, and uh, I don't remember who else, but anyway, so we're we're at the hospital, and <laughs> maybe it was, it might have, um, Bobby might have been there too, um, and it might have been Phil on the table, I can't remember, all I know is that, like, not one of them could keep a straight face because like Michael Storm like just I don't know he just does stuff that's really funny and then Phil on top of that between the two of them it's yeah. ridiculous and then throw in Bobby if he I can't remember if he was there or not but uh, it was it was like and 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 like because these are the like these are the big guys right so you know I didn't want to just like start cracking up because like even if they are it doesn't you know I'm still. <laughs> newer or younger or whatever like I don't want to be the one who gets in trouble for for it you know so, so I'm just like out. trying <laughs> so hard to keep a straight face and they're just like yeah. completely like I mean I can't and I don't even know what it was but I just know that not, I mean even Erica I looked over at her and I saw her like crack and I thought okay if <laughs> she's cracking <laughs> there's no way we're gonna get through this speed and of course they cut and and like it was just it was just it was mayhem it was hilarious but um, right. I think that was probably one of my most most favorite um, moments just because it was so funny and it was with people who 
I was like, whoa, you know, these are the 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 big boys in town. So, um, no doubt. But uh, but I think like you know, as far as like just amazing scenes and um and and stuff I got to do, <laughs> that you're right. There are so many. Michael Easton um was an uh, an awesome partner. Like we had so much fun together on set. Um, a lot of times during rehearsals, we would, um, so I started doing, so, okay. So, you know, like, because, because like the lines are serious and I was saying like, everything's really, really serious every day, you know, and, uh, and at some point or another, like you, you have to find funny in it in order to kind of break that up. Right. And so mm-hmm. I started just like doing my lines during camera blocking, like with, like a Catherine Hepburn voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and okay. like just doing things okay. like in a really silly way just to kind of break it up and make it. Fun. And I couldn't believe it. But one day, like Michael joined in and started doing like an accent as well. And he's like, not one that you see, like be silly a lot. Right. And so right. that just kind of became this like fun thing that we would do <laughs> during rehearsals. And then, um, And I I think another thing I really liked about working with him is um, he was a very generous actor. So, like, (laughs) there was stuff he did. Now, granted, I didn't realize this at the time because I was young and naive. So I was like, oh, my gosh, it was so nice. But then I realized later there's probably a little bit of a trick to this. But um, I remember, Uh like, a couple times he would say to me before um, a scene, he would just say, you look pretty. And I can't tell you like, because it was so simple, but just, mm-hmm. like, what I needed to hear, right? You know, because, like, as an yeah. actress, we get very insecure about things, you know, especially if there was, you know, a reason to that earlier that day or whatever. So it was just so mm-hmm. nice. And he, he would just say that, but it would change the, everything in that scene because it's all of a sudden it would just, like, relax me and then, you know, and then the scene would just play out with, like, so much amazing chemistry. And... So I don't know. If, I don't know if he did it as a tactic or if it was if it was genuine. Or I mean, I don't think he was disingenuous, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't oh, know if no it was a, a, bit, a bit of a plan or not, but either way, it worked. And uh, yeah, I loved it. And then you know, of course, working with Erica. My God, like I can't say enough good things about her. She's just mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like a pro in every every which way. And um, and she always made me feel really good about my work um, because, you know, there's just, again, you're doing it all the time and you're, there's just, you know, so you start to lose kind of uh, an objective <laughs> view on anything. So, uh, you know, hearing something from someone like her, it just, you know, that's, that's, I could, you know, go home for days with smiles, <laughs> you know, just, just <laughs> from that one, you know? And um, I remember, oh my gosh, I was like, <laughs> So, so embarrassed. So it was like her scene. She's telling me a story in the scene and, and like, you know, very emotional. Um, I can't remember what it was, but it was like something so emotional, you know, and I was just, I was right there with her and I'm just looking at her and just like, I can't not be engrossed in this. Right. Yeah. And then I, there's this like really long pause. Then I realized, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what sucked about it is there was no, because of the, the the angles they were on, there was no way to cut it or there was no way to edit it. So we had to redo it. So she had to oh, do the whole goodness. thing over. Oh, my like, goodness. Oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> but she was so good. And I just, like, <laughs> just like got so into it that I forgot I was supposed to talk too. <laughs> right, right. Um yeah, so there was a those moments and of course um another awesome um person was you mentioned earlier was Bree. Um you know, I got lucky that I got to work with Aaron Torpy, um who's also yeah. just incredible. Um but then Bree, you know, came on and you know, you never know what it's going to be like with the the person who's replacing and she turned out mm-hmm. to be a phenomenal actress, um, a great person. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I feel like I've, I learned from Brie 
um, over the years that I, I don't even know if at the time I understood that I was learning them, but, you know, post, right. I feel like, oh, my gosh, I learned so much. But oh, And you guys sorry, had some crazy fights, too. You guys had some crazy yes. fight scenes. Locking well. me in a... <laughs> <laughs> locking me in a basement and the Crazy. her personality disorders and yeah. um Tess Tess coming after me all the time. Yeah, there was some really cool stuff. <laughs> um and I was so, you know, happy for her that that she got to do like all the um the the personality stuff because that's really hard and she just I know. nailed it nailed yeah. it and i i was just yeah. oh so impressed and so happy for her and so happy with her um just it was she's she was or it, she is phenomenal but she was phenomenal in the acting and stuff and um and i enjoyed i enjoyed spending time with her when we did it takes a lot um, of a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of what you all have done to create all these memories that you mentioned, oh. Melissa Archer, is my guest on Next Legacy Radio, and I want to, I want to, I want to say that uh, when when it comes to like just how things are now, I know you know there's still a few um, you know uh, daytime shows still out there, Young and the Restless, General Hospital still going on. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a, there's still a lot going on in general, but how do you feel about just the age of not just social media, but just acting there's a lot of channels more than you know it has been ever and Mm -hmm. there's a lot but how do you feel about just the evolution of it because uh the reason why i want to ask you this question is i can take your character that you have portrayed we've said it all throughout the show that there is an evolution of where you started to where it is Mm -hmm. in terms of growth patience etc do you still see that feel that in some shows in this day and age in 2024 um, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't watched any soaps in a long time, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, and I think a lot of, I mean, if you look at majority of the drama, the nighttime primetime dramas that are out there, they're, they're soap operas. They're just one week. So their storylines aren't stretched and they have right. probably a little bit bigger budget to, to make the, you know, the visual of it better and, and probably shot a lot. Well, I'm single K, I'm not multi. Mm. But um so I think in that way, like those the the quality looks better and all of that, but I mean if you if you listen to it, it is a soap opera. And um oh, yeah. it's just slightly different, right? Um yeah. and then you have your procedurals, which are all the like, you know, police detective and lawyer type shows, medical shows. Um so I mean and I think um, I think a lot of that, um, I mean, it's evolved for sure, right? Like, we, we had a lot more multi-cam comedies with studio audience back in the day. Yep. That's not really as much of a thing. It's most mostly single cam, some uh, some multi-cam, but I think even in that, I don't know if they're actually a studio audience anymore, <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure on that. Right, um, right. You know, there's there's been a lot of, you know, changes in, in that. There's been a lot of, um, um, well, even just, like, what what is funny, right? Like, um, I think The Office and, you know, shows like that kind of changed a lot of what comedy could be um, in that kind of docu or mockumentary style mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. with uh, that and then also um, Modern Family, you know, very similar kind of thing. and. Um, but then, you know, then stuff, you know, changes even more. And then you have shows like, um, you know, on, I guess it's called Max now, uh, but like the Game of Thrones type things. And um, yep. uh, and they're all, well, I shouldn't say they're all really good because they're not all really good. <laughs> there's like a lot of them that are really good. And then there's a lot of stuff that's not very good. And then there's a lot of stuff, believe it or not, that's really good but just not really heard about because um, it's, you right. know, they didn't have a big budget or they didn't have a big distributor or they don't, you know, whatever. And I agree. Um, so there's, a, I mean, even indie stuff, there's a ton of indie stuff out there that's phenomenal but, like, no one's heard of it, Right. Um, right. And then there's like indie stuff that sucks. And unfortunately, if you've had one or two that aren't great, you become a little skeptical about where you want to spend your time. Because if you don't know if it's right. good, 
you don't want to you don't want to risk it sometimes. So it's 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 tricky. But um, where I think it's gone though, as far as like the nature of watching, um, as as it changed from you know being able to only watch live to then VCR to then DVR to then uh, where we are today with streaming. Um, yep. And now, and now, and I think even in the VCR and DVR days, binge watching was definitely starting back then because you could. And then uh, now, be, because of the way it's fed to us, it's it's most certainly, I think people binge watch a lot. Um, and in in that case, I feel like shows can't really do the same thing that they did before to keep the attention, right? So um, if you're going to wait uh, an entire year after only doing seven episodes, like you m- might lose some people because there's a lot of other content for them to go watch. And unless there's nothing else at that point, you know, then, okay, I want to come back in. Or if it was just like, you know, the cliffhanger of the year that they like absolutely have to get back to it, you know, or the show is just that good. But um, I mean, there's several shows that I thought I really, you know, enjoyed, but then realized later when it came time to like download the next, series um mm-hmm. i might have been like uh i don't know i could practice <laughs> you know and even if i really liked it right right and, right and and so because you just start to reprioritize whatever is feeling good in the moment and i mean look that's just the nature of our life now right i mean yeah. social media is a scroll you know you get fed something new every two seconds um you know tiktok is the new like in some ways T V in like ten That's seconds. Right. <laughs> um and and I mean I think they did a they did a network um that was that was designed to to kind of just be, you know, short short term content. Um uh-huh. and and also like in the um the port, portrait mode. Um but I don't think it did as well as it as it had predicted that it would do. Right. Um, because I think there's a lot of people who are very interested still in, I mean, there's still a lot of people who are interested in good quality, um, you know, content like movies and, and television, but then there's a really larger, younger audience that I don't think cares as much about that stuff. And they care about content, but they care about it in the like, what am I learning or what is, what am I getting entertained from? And, um, and, and is it entertaining? And I need it to be quick because I don't have the attention span to, to do much more. And, you just um, said. yeah. And part of the attention span lack is, you know, there's, I mean, obviously there's, there's people who, who have it, you know, cause it's ADD and stuff. Right. But then there's also the way, um, over the years we've been conditioned to take in less and less. I mean, if you think about dramas and, and even comedies, Early, earlier on, the show was, you know, say it's a 30-minute show, but you would get a lot more um, in that 30 minutes of the content and maybe only a couple of commercials because you had, like, one or two large sponsorships that would come right. in and do their, you know, story. And they would do their own storyline within the commercial, so it was kind of cool. And then, you know, that was the rest of it. But then when they started doing, you know, multi-ads and whatever – it's like they started feeding us and teaching us to accept less. So then it was like, okay, something in that maybe it was like 20 minutes. Now we're getting 15 minutes of content and the yep. rest are ads, right? And yep. then when we went to streaming, you know, some things were ad-free, but then you have the ones that are still ads. And, oh, let me tell you, um, the worst <laughs> is watching something like on Hulu or something because they literally repeat the same Stupid commercial, right. not only through the episode, which so it's like they already know you're watching this. So why are you playing oh, the same right. exact one? Just give me a second version or something. But then, if I'm binge watching eight, eight episodes, I get to see the same commercial a thousand times. Oh my gosh, oh, it is so right. infuriating. Uh, you're so right. and so, <laughs> but. Again, it's conditioned people to, like, have to change. So it's not only are we not getting as much content, but then you're also having to change your 
uh, attention span because now I was focused on this, you know, and engrossed in this story, and now I'm out of that story and I'm paying attention to this other thing, or I'm trying to ignore it because I don't want to hear it, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's one of, and so that's kind of how uh, attention kind of has gone that way, and and then you know, kids are interested, and I mean, I think even as uh, myself, like I'm interested in, I want to. I want to see more documentaries. I want to see more things that are real. Um, I'm, I, I've learned so much on TikTok. I mean, stuff I can't unknow. <laughs> um, I was uh, blissfully ignorant for a very long time about right. what was going on in the world and politics and all the things because I didn't want to know and I didn't care. And uh, I had to finally kind of get to a place where I cared. And so I started um, – I didn't watch TikTok for that reason. I was watching it because somebody convinced me I had to finally get it because there was funny stuff on there. So I finally did it. Right. And then right. I saw a couple of funny ones, but because I was still new, the algorithm was just sending me like anything. And so political stuff started popping up and then, you know, just other news stuff started popping up. And the next thing you know, like now it feeds me all news all the time. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's how I learn about what's happening in the world. And then of course, like, I get infuriated and upset over it, and, and I'm like, I wish I knew nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's fabulous because the news is not only is at our fingertips in that way, but it's coming from um, it's it's coming it, it's being delivered differently, right? Whereas you know before in the news um, and you know still today we have these networks that are essentially controlled by you know these other corporations, um, so they you know, will kind of pivot from certain things and or distort certain things in order to please the powers to be. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, a person on TikTok doesn't really have anything to lose. And I'm, I mean, I'm not saying every person who comes on there is a, a source to be trusted, but there are certain people oh, who have information and are willing exactly. to share it that that don't have an agenda, you know, or being or being paid by, you know, somebody who's telling them this is what you say or this is what you don't say and mm -hmm. therefore has given me an opportunity to learn a lot more things than you know than I would have before um Agreed. and and I do so I think when you ask about the evolution I, I would say that's kind of where I, I see it I mean I only live in my little world so I don't know really what other people <laughs> do <laughs> but you know what Melissa Melissa Archer is my guest on Next Legacy Radio but you're 100 percent right because of what you mentioned, like I'm listening to you and I'm like, I'm, I'm so agreeing because it is it's the attention span. It's, we have, we have more, but less in some cases, but you know, right, you know, right. here I am you know, just kind of telling it like it is. And I miss the days of, and I will, I will, I will always remember this because of like certain memories that you want to attach yourself to when it comes to not just consuming television or movies or whatever, but, you know, to oh, yeah. me, I feel like, you know, emotionally invested in some cases. And do I feel mm -hmm. that way in some cases with other things now? Not, not not a whole lot or not as much as I would want to, which is the reason why I still continue right. to go back sometimes and catch those old classic, you know, When Life to Live or whatever, because mm -hmm. I remember those moments. I remember when, oh, I forgot about that. I did not know she mm -hmm. did that or he did that or something, right? So, <laughs> right, right. You know, it's, it's those moments where you just really kind of reach for, you know, some, not just nostalgia. And I feel like some of the young kids are going to miss that moment when they grow up and get a little older and they're, you know, because mm -hmm. they don't have an attachment to, in some cases, you, you, you get what I mean? I do. I think there's an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting dynamic that could, could potentially happen, or I'd love, I'd love to hear the research on it. If any, if any is done, but you know, growing up with, our lives, right? We were given uh, storylines to um, to watch, and that's kind of how we were fed things. And in some ways, I mean, when you're young, some of it feels real because we don't know the difference when we're children. Um, True. You know, from what is real and what's what's just a script or something, right? And yep. um, and we're living in a world of make believe constantly um, in that in that way. The children today. So many of them are living in a, you know, in a world of like, here, here's the way it is. <laughs> you know, they're right. they're seeing things, 
even if they're not supposed to be on social media because of their age, they probably are. And they're seeing things and hearing things. And that's kind of, I feel, feel like what they're getting, they're, that's what they're consuming. So they're not really consuming this other um, fantasy, I guess, right? They're consuming sometimes a very sad reality and sometimes an exploited reality, right? Because obviously, as we know, algorithms will also shoot things at you um, and then start <laughs> shooting one thing at you and not giving you all, the right. whole picture, right? So um, there's that. And I mean, I don't know what else the kids have, but they have the games. So their, their fantasies, or not fantasies, sorry, their fan, fantasy world that they're in are the games. So they're, you know, they're in these immersive games. That, I mean, honestly, these days they look like movies. <laughs> they don't even look right. like a game, right. you know. Yeah. And and they lose themselves in that world. And here's a really, it's it, it's going to sound weird when I say it because it is weird. And I don't know if anyone else experiences things like the way I do. But, um, okay, so Discord, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a, a yeah. chat app. Yeah, okay. And it has um, different rooms and stuff. And I, I got into a game a while back that um, we use Discord to, you know, kind of use as, like, the base for all of, all of our team, right? And right. anyway, in that, I learned how to um, basically create <laughs> really, really – cool <laughs> discord like it was really awesome um at least in my opinion anyway uh that being said um what was interesting in being in this kind of like gaming world i didn't know these people right and i hadn't met them in person um but i would create or or visualize i should say i would visualize like um so it was like a game of thrones type style right so we would have these like right. training rooms and we'd have you know, and we we call them you know things that would kind of go with that that theme, and I could I could feel like I was in that. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> as silly as that sounds, and and I mean that might even be the actor in me or something, but <laughs> but I but I could like I could feel like you know an opening um, uh, of of like stories in a sense, or I should say backgrounds or or, or you know, what, what a set, <laughs> like, I guess right. that's what it is, right? And I don't know yeah. if other kids that are, you know, playing their games and stuff, if they see it the same way my, my brain just did. And I, again, I, I'm, I don't even know how to explain that in a way that doesn't sound weird, but, <laughs> but it's true. And if you could be immersed in any kind of game that has, you know, a way to communicate with others, um, you know, I could see that just being your, your next, like, thing to maybe confuse sometimes between reality and well well melissa i think you you are you are you are immersed in what you're doing but then you get out and you can you can adjust to the real to the real world right like you could you can figure it yeah. out like you have you you can you can dive in and you can dive right back out and snap back and get it i know sometimes some people are stuck in the matrix sometimes it's just like that right it's, it's you know it gets yeah. to that point um well, tell me a little bit about it right <laughs> yeah Right, huh? exactly right. People do. People do. It's it's, it's a yeah. trip. Tell me a little bit about uh, MelissaArcher.com. dot com. Okay, so it's it's undergoing some some changes. So I just recently um, opened. Well, I didn't open the store. I had the store already, but I, I hadn't really done much with it. But I just created a new line of apparel and some accessories. And um, and actually, that will be getting an, um, a facelift here soon. Um, because I found another um, merchandising company that I'm going to work with that uh, will allow me to do a little bit more and uh, quality is a little bit better, and it's also um, a little um, – pr price is a little bit better. So nice. anyway, I'm working on that. So MelissaArcher.com is definitely under some construction. But, um, you know, the first parts of it are pretty, you know, the same, same old – stuff, just kind of showing you my, uh, my work from the past and um, uh, gallery of pictures and things like that. But uh, the store is definitely something I'm, I'm very excited about right now. Um, I, so I, you know, obviously, you know that I do this van life life. <laughs> and uh, I've had a lot of incredible experiences with hiking and just 
seeing things that I never thought I'd get to see in just most beautiful places. And, um, and I've gotten to capture a lot in pictures and stuff. Um, and one day I was, I was talking to someone and I don't remember what the conversation was about. I just remember saying, um, it's better to wander than to wonder. And as yes. soon as I said it, <laughs> as soon as I said it, I was like, oh my gosh, that has to go on a t-shirt. So I wrote it down because I will, I never remember. I, I say that all the time. I go, oh, this should go on a t-shirt. And I never remember, but I was like, I'm writing this down. And so then it kind of started the whole like, okay, I've got to find a design that goes with it. And um, I, I basically used, so I took a picture that I have and kind of gave it to AI to uh, know the tone. Um, but I wanted it to look not so picturey. I wanted it to look more like how it does, kind of with that not cartoon, but kind of <clears throat> look to it. And so um, I ha I told it, it exactly what I wanted, and um, it gave me some different options. I picked the one I wanted, but then um, I I had other ideas for it. So then I I took some other stuff, and then I photoshopped them, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of made my own little thing out of it. And um, after I was done, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is it, because it really encompassed, I feel like, so many of the uh, places I've been to. But probably one of my f most favorites um, was Glacier National Park on the, uh, on the east side. Yeah, I just absolutely fell in love with that place. And, um, and I felt like this design kind of reminds me of, glacier and it also kind of reminds me of um the grand tetons and um just you know all the all the like mountainy areas and stuff that uh i've seen and of course i have the girl and the dog because it's me and my dog and right. um yeah it just it's um it, it it makes me feel like i am uh I'm, I'm getting a chance to experience something that that I, I wasn't even expecting. And I think that's kind of where the, the saying kind of came from because wander can kind of, you know, take on the, the, the sense of, you know, you don't know, you're, you, you're wandering around, you don't know where you're going. Um, but I kind of look at it as for the first time, I'm not planning. I'm not saying this, I am just experiencing and by that it's essentially wandering but it's not a bad thing mm -hmm. and and I feel like I'm so glad I'm doing that even though I don't know what tomorrow brings and what you know like I don't have a, a plan for it I just I'm doing um I would rather be doing that than wondering what if so. yeah and, and I, and that hits uh and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to bring it up too and that hits because when I saw it, I was like, okay, yeah, definitely getting the apparel because I definitely want to support my girl, Melissa, for sure. But I feel like this, the better to wander than to wonder can speak volumes on everything about life, not just personal, but professional, oh, yeah. but, you know, and everything that kind of yeah. encompasses exactly what you mean. Because when you say, you know, wandering, that means, you know what, I'm on a journey. I'm just looking, mm -hmm. I'm absorbing, I'm taking in not just the mm -hmm. environment, but people, but even you can fill in so many blanks when it comes to that. Because if you do wonder, you're going to wonder, you know what, I've missed the boat or I missed my opportunity or yes. I missed X, Y, Z. And I get that. Yes. And I felt that to the core because that's what a lot of us feel. Even I don't care how old you are or how young you are, you're going to get to a moment where you're going to feel like, you know what, this is the journey I want to explore. And this is where the 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 stuff from Melissa Archer is going to be important as a reminder as well as far as what you want to do. I think it's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's an incredible journey, and I just <laughs> I just love I love exploring what I don't even know about it, and and coming uh, every day is a new experience. And um, your many some of it's your very many simple. chapters. <laughs> Right, and your yeah. many chapters of, of life and love and, 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 and the journey that is still what you do and how you do it is going to, you know, it's going to enhance just by this. I mean, now you have a new 
you know, a, a new mission to, to go through and explore and, and take it day mm-hmm. by day, step by step. And it's a beautiful, beautiful look. And what we want to do at Next Legacy as well is we want to promote promote and promote so we're gonna you know you and i will talk offline and you know i'll get together a a commercial you know 30 to 60 second commercial to run uh you know daily um in regards to just bringing traffic to melissaarcher.com and anybody that's listening will be i need everyone to just go and bookmark and shop because they can still pick up the the apparel right still available yeah yes yep yep if you go to store.melissaarcher.com you can get the current line, um, and the new line will be uh, uh, similar, but it'll it'll be on the website, so it'll be easy. Don't just go now. Go right now. So yeah. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> Follow my girl yeah. on Instagram at underscore Melissa Archer as well. Don't hesitate. Make sure you do that as well. And a couple more questions, Melissa. One is, um, you know, what, what I said earlier is, uh, you know, how's the training, the, the ninja training? What level are you at right oh, now? Oh, the Three, ninja four, training. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. So Are you a full I'm not really. Now or... <laughs> no, I. <laughs> so there, there was like, there's, there's a couple of hidden reasons for that. Uh, one is I'm like obsessed with them, right? So, um, I did have, I don't know if you remember, I did Melissa's a dork like a long time ago, and um, yeah. And so like I, I had a ninja episode, you know, and I was, I was like yeah. super obsessed with everything, like I could, you know, lock pick locks and, um, you know jailbreak iPhones and, you know, whatever. Like, I just wanted to do all sorts of fun things that were just different. And I loved it, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and uh, – but I wasn't, like, a real ninja. <laughs> and I I, uh, I just was obsessed with it. Um, and – but the other aspect of that is, like, so I was, you know, trying to live in the world of the, the hacking world. And even though I wasn't, like, a – I don't consider myself a, a real hacker just because I didn't have the skill set. But I, I felt like I – had the mentality in some ways <laughs> um, on some of it. So I couldn't write the code, but I could, I could do a lot of stuff. And um, so I was training a lot of times, you know, learning from other people. And one of the things they call um, uh, some people is, you know, or are ninjas in that world. So that was just kind of like, it was like a couple of reasons to throw it all together. And I was like, ah, oh, see, that fits. <laughs> Listen, listen, Melissa, I, I, you, you can say it all you want to, but you put that out there. I'm already assuming I'm just, I'm just over here on social media, just assuming that, you know what, Melissa's at a level 10 and I need to be <laughs> exactly, I need to be, I need to be slick in how I go about, like, I want to jump down somewhere and nobody can feel or hear that. I just want to be right? smooth with, with it and just be so quiet when I either sneak behind or sneak around or spot, stop exactly. on, on bottom. Do that slick. I just want to be so smooth with that. So, you know what, Melissa? Teach me. Teach me. <laughs> teach, teach me. Oh I want gosh. to learn. You and I, listen, you and I are going to make a, we're going to make a pack right now. We are going to go into extensive ninja training and we are going to share our journey with the world as far as how how much or how many times that we snuck on snuck on people behind people whatever like you know we're, like we're gonna do it you and I let's do it let's do it let's do it, let's do it. I love it one last one last question one last question you know this is a radio station we do play music on occasion clearly but you know what's what's in Melissa Archer's playlist right now oh gosh um I got I got a lot of things um. So um, I didn't listen to new music for a really long time. And uh, and then really I would kind of only listen to new music if someone, like, played it for me. And I was like, oh, I like mm-hmm. that. So I wasn't, like, a Swifty person or whatever because, I, I mean, I didn't have anything against her. I just didn't, I wasn't, I, like, just didn't get into it or whatever. But yeah. I'm still not necessarily. But there are some songs where I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And I what I what I do really love is I love her. I think she's a phenomenal person. Um, well, I haven't met her, but as far as, like, what she does for people. Um, for sure. So on that end, I think she's a really great person. So, therefore, I kind of want to be supportive of her music. So I'm, I've been mm-hmm. trying to get into some of it. I'm not – I don't like a lot of pop, pop stuff. So um, I'm just kind of listening to different songs and whatever – hits then I'm keeping it and whatever doesn't then I don't um so that's one yeah. um and then Jason Isbell which is like a totally opposite 
um, kind of thing. And uh, Bob Schneider. And um, let me think. Uh, I have a few um, kind of oldies. Uh, well, I mean, not that old, I guess, but old, <laughs> old, <laughs> old for like any Gen Alphas and Gen Zs. Um, <laughs> uh, so I hold on. I'm getting. I'm pulling it up because I can't remember anything. Um, <laughs> that's also what happens in your 40s, by the way. So. <laughs> Um, I have a playlist. This is literally, I call my playlist, I like. I like. So, I, I like. like. <laughs> I like, so I have, okay. I have things that they're like, um, I have, you know, Guns N' Roses and, um, but then I have Scissor Sisters. <laughs> so, love it. Uh, I love it. I have the Eagles and then I have Amy Mann. Um, I even have Stone Temple Pilots in here, but I think it's only like one song. Um, and Eminem, of course. <laughs> Amos Lee. Oh, yes. I knew I was forgetting something. Amos Lee. I freaking love that guy. He is okay. a great singer. Great singer. Uh, John Mayer. Tom Petty, of course. Um, <laughs> you're like, sure, of course. <laughs> um, that's that's yeah. got to be on the list, Melissa. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. I know. So that's my, I mean, there's other people, but that's kind of the, um, oh, and Harry Styles, of course. I love him. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's I anybody. I love the diversity. I love, love, love <laughs> I know it's the all over the place. <laughs> playlist. So I'm going to ask you yeah. one final question that's still music related. So, all right, I'm yep. going to put you on the spot. What is the best no. decade of music? What is the best decade of music in your opinion? Best decade. Ooh. Oh, that's tough because there's different genres for the best. But I would say the best uh, hip hop was '90s hip hop, um, and right. actually a lot of really great songs came out of the '90s. Um, and then I would say, uh, yeah, I would say probably '90s, and then some uh, like in the more recent, um, like I guess this decade. Okay. <laughs> but only right. because I'm only okay. hearing them now. It might have been from last decade. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'm not sure. You know, I always got to throw this out there, and I've thrown it out there with a lot. But you know, I've always been, you know, I've always catered to a lot of '80s music, just mainly because you could dust off a lot of '80s uh, movies That's along true. with the soundtrack yeah. to those movies. Yeah. And you, you can't yeah. win. And, and '80s was a diverse, diverse decade as well, because you were winning not just the early days of hip hop, but just, just you know. Everything, pop, light rock, heavy metal, whatever. Like you were still, everybody was. It was just a melting pot of just music and creativity at that yeah. during that time. So, yeah, yeah, that's but the true. That's true. Is, Melissa, the movie soundtrack. You you can't you can't like you listen to a song. Oh, I remember that movie. Or you watch the right, movie. Right, I right. remember those songs or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah you can't go. Wrong. But see, like I yeah, I no. grew up. Like, my teenage, my formative years were in the 90s. So I think that's part of the reason why 90s also sticks with me because it's like, you okay. know, when I was a kid, it's like my parents' music. But then, like, you know, when you're a teen, it's your music. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, exactly, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Archer.com is the website. Hit her up on social media at underscore Melissa Archer. And just uh, actually, if you go on Instagram, you'll see her link tree. Everything that is Melissa Archer, please, please, please go and say hello and show your support. Make those purchases just like I am. We're going to put together something real cool for the radio audience as well as Melissa Archer fan base to uh, awesome. make sure that it grows and grows and grows. And in closing, I want to I want to thank you. I literally am always, always in awe of what you've given to me. So if I told myself any time in media that I have, I got to find some some way, shape, or form to be able to pay it forward because, you know, like I told you, it goes a long way, not just your portrayal of Natalie on One Life to Live, but everything that you have given in terms of the effort, the acting, the the just the patience and the and all the ups and downs that comes with the work that you do and the business that you're in, we, we have to give our flowers to those who are worthy and you, you are, and you have been not just that character, but everything else that you embody. So, you know, just, just keep evolving and 
And I'm going to keep, I'm, listen, I'm a fan now. Listen, you gave me a slogan yeah. that will forever, ever be in my life now. <laughs> like, I'm, you Yay. have no idea how heavy that hits my heart. You know, even like when I do your commercial, even when I say something like, you know, better to wander than to wonder. And that gives me chills when I hear it. It really and truly yeah. does, true to life. So it, everything. So thank you for I'm that. So glad. Thank you for the years. And just thank you for being you, Melissa. You are the best. <laughs> thank you so much. I had so much fun. And- Thank you for listening to the number one radio station for the people.